Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Shenco 2045 Day. That is the day every month where we meet up with Tyler Hinkle. He is Shenandoah County's planner and we talk about Shenandoah County's comprehensive plan coming to fruition for 2045. And Tyler, you've got a whole new chapter and a whole new group of guys for us to talk to today. We got a whole wealth of knowledge here at this table today. So we're going to have all, all kinds of great information for the public to hear. In the past, we've covered a lot of the chapters already. We've talked about a chapter six, which was housing, chapter seven, community facilities, chapter eight, which was transportation. We've done natural resources, which was chapter two. Today, we're going to be talking about historical and cultural resources, which is a pretty big deal in Shenandoah County because you guys have a lot of historical and cultural resources there in Shenandoah County. We have a ton of historical and cultural resources, and luckily, each person here at this table has had a lot of experience with each of those types of resources, and it might be beneficial maybe we could go around and let everybody know some of that background they've had and who, who all we have here at the table. Let's um, start with Zach Hoddle. Zach has done the show with me. People will recognize Zach's voice. Zach is a county historian. He's also the archivist for Shenandoah County Library System, and most recently, Zach was on the show because he's on the planning committee for the big 250th anniversary celebration for Shenandoah County. Zach, you've got a lot of hats that you're wearing at any given time. I have a lot of hats. Tell me a little bit about your background and your history and how that fits into working on this particular chapter for the comprehensive plan. I'm a Shenandoah County native. I grew up here and went away to college to study the history of our country, really. And while I was there, I was hooked by this idea of studying what's called public history, which is the way we take history and then share it with the communities and the people around us. That was really fascinating to me is, is how do we craft those stories and work my way through a graduate program studying that. And then when I finished up in 2015, we just happened to be hiring an archivist here in Shenandoah County and came back to fill that position and been here ever since. I love the opportunity to work with our local history and to take the opportunity to share the really unique stories that we have. And I think that this chapter in the comprehensive plan is a way for us to define really what the comprehensive plan is about in the background and how our history and our resources here have really developed where we're at today in the county, where we're going in the future, and defines who we are as a community. And that's one of the things you and I have had conversations about on previous shows is that history isn't always just something that has happened in the past. Every single day, we're making new history that in 20 years, somebody will look back on. And you're very cognizant of that and want to make sure that what people see in 20 years looking back to now is representative of the county as a whole. Yes. And to put on my 250th hat for a minute and do a shameless plug, that's one of the things that we have really been focused on as part of the commemoration of the 250th is not only studying and sharing the stories from the past, but how those really in everyday life define what goes here in the county now. And then it's defining what is going to happen in the future. And that's what the comprehensive plan is about. And that's really what history is about is how it impacts us today and it's going to continue to impact us. Sitting across the table from Zach is Brad Swank. He is a CAC member. How is it that you ended up on the CAC and, and specifically working on this particular chapter, Brad? Are you somewhat of a backyard historian yourself? I'm definitely not a resident expert like these three that I'm sitting across from. But I was asked to be on the Citizen Advisory Committee, actually, by one of my neighbors, a good friend, John Bennett, who you had on, on one of your shows talking about transportation. John and I are, are very like-minded people. We, we share a lot of similar views, and he had been appointed to the, the Citizen Advisory Committee, I believe, a few months before he, he had asked me to consider the appointment. And so at the end of August, I was appointed by the Board of Supervisors to represent District 3, along with John and I really had to piece a, a lot of things together. Okay, what are our responsibilities? And of course, the focus right now is the comprehensive plan. There was a spot available in the history chapter. And I thought that is definitely right up my alley. I absolutely love history. I'm a retired Marine. I retired from the Marine Corps seven and a half years ago. And of course, the Marine Corps is deeply rooted in, in its history. And it's really ingrained in us from day one, when we stepped foot on Paris Island or San Diego. And that I believe is what has preserved the Marine Corps and has allowed them to be so successful as the Marines 
are known to be. My interest in history has really been a, a driving force in getting into the, the comprehensive plan and gathering information from the community and coming up with and, and drafting a plan for 2045. Sitting next to Brad is Bill Wine. He is a local historian. What is your background as far as Shenandoah County's history is concerned? Oh, wow. That's a... How long do you have here? I was going to say, is that a whole other <laughs> show in and of itself? <laughs> Now, I mean, the interest in history for me started, gosh, back when I was in my adolescent years. We lived in western Loudoun County along a mountain, and I was walking through the woods and stumbled across an old stone chimney that had looked like it had been there since the 1700s. So I started asking the neighbors, the elderly people who I know had lived there a long time, about this chimney. They told me they knew where the chimney was. They remember when the house was standing and the people that lived in the house. So I got this visual description of what life was like when these people were youngsters. And I was just awestruck by their lifestyle, the, the simplicity, the hardships. And then that just spawned on to my interest in how these old buildings were built, how the stone was laid, how it was cut, how the timbers were hewn. So I started collecting the tools and learning the techniques of the construction of that era. That led on into eventually me getting involved in this as a business, restoring older buildings, houses, and whatnot. But in tandem, I was also interested in the local history I learned a little bit about Loudoun County and the area that I lived in there. We moved to Shenandoah County when I was 17 years of age, so I was able to graduate with students at Central. They took me in like, like I was one of their own, and I began to do that same interview with the older people around Shenandoah County about what was life like when you were growing up. Tell me about this. Tell me about that. I just started absorbing all of this information that these people were sharing with me. I was just truly blessed. When I think back on the people that I had talked to, how well known they were throughout the community. They had been here a long time. So I just started compiling all this local history information. And back during the pandemic, when that first started, and I didn't do this because of the pandemic. I was just doing it to gather information, and that was to create some local history Facebook pages that just absolutely had taken off with members. Now it's such a big hit. I, I think people would cry and scream if I took them down, <laughs> and I'm drafting a, a historical map to try to compile all the different maps of the area into one particular map. And of course, Tyler's doing this on the county level as well, but I want to have this printed to where people can appreciate the local history and the richness of this area with all the various old mills and mill sites and schools and factories and furnaces and cemeteries and, and the like. So they invited me here to give them a little bit of input. I'm not sure what I can add, but <laughs> I'll do what I can. Tyler. What exactly is involved? Can you and Brad explain to me what is in this particular chapter, how you look at it, and what your goal is moving into 2045? The history chapter is that first chapter in the comprehensive plan. And I think that's partially intentional with the, the county. I think that's how it's always been, but it's to start with where you come from, to know where you're going to go. There is a lot of intention put into what has led the county to be what it is today and how that's going to influence what it'll be tomorrow. And so, of course, there's a section that describes the history of the county and gives those resources. Just uh, reviewing some of the, the past comprehensive plans, I will say that it's probably going to be difficult in the sense of how rich the history is and how in-depth the history is of the county to take all that and boil it down to give an overview to what is important to the county citizens. What's historical events are significant and should be included in this and what do we need to do in the future looking ahead, obviously, for the 2045 plan to preserve those 
historic interests, be it structures, be it the education, be it some of the resources. The the thing about history is that it touches everything else. This isn't a standalone chapter necessarily because history has had an impact on what transportation looks like now. History has had an impact on what housing looks like now. So you really do have to have that big picture moving forward while you're still cognizant of what happened in the past. And, and the history chapter in and of itself is comprehensive, not to be <laughs> too honey on it, you know, for the comprehensive plan. But it does, like Tyler alluded to, it is the first chapter. And whether that's by design or not, I, I don't know. However, it does affect each and every chapter that comes after. Like I said, it, it is going to be difficult to boil those things down and, and to get it to, to be succinct and what the intent of the, the county citizens and the Citizens Advisory Committee are those historic events and preservation ideas are included in the upcoming plan. Everybody has a different perspective. They all place a different value on not just how important it is, but what it actually is. So I'm curious to hear what some of the feedback was at some of these information sessions. Let's take a break. When we come back, Tyler, can we get in the weeds a little bit on some of the feedback that everybody heard when they went to these information sessions about what the community feels as far as history and moving forward? For sure. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to chat with Tyler Hinkle. He is Shenandoah County's planner. Joining him on the screen today is Zach Cotto. He is the county historian. Brad Swank is with us. He's part of the CAC District 3. And Bill Wine is here with us as well. He's a local historian. We're going to talk with all of them more about Chapter 1, Historical and Cultural Resources for Shenandoah County's 2045 Comprehensive Plan in just a couple of minutes. Got a financial decision to make or a goal to reach, but you don't know where to start? You've come to the right place. Introducing Quick Money Chats with the Northern Shenandoah Valley Financial Education Program. Visit tinyurl.com backslash quickmoneychat to schedule a virtual chat with a staff member or trained volunteer. We won't tell you what to do, but we will give you the tools you need to choose wisely. And because Virginia Cooperative Extension is part of Virginia Tech and Virginia State, your land-grant universities, you can be sure that our information is credible and trustworthy. And you'll know that we aren't trying to sell you something. Maybe you want to improve your credit score or reduce your banking overdraft fees or even figure out if you can afford to buy that car. Sorting through tons of information on the internet can be overwhelming and sometimes it can be hard to know who to trust. Schedule a quick money chat and get the information you need to take action. Go to tinyurl.com backslash quick money chat and get financial education personalized for you. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It's all about the history today, the history of Shenandoah County, which ironically we're talking about as we're looking forward to Shenandoah County 2045. We're talking about the comprehensive plan. Tyler Hinkle is here on the screen with us. He is Shenandoah County's planner. Joining him around the table is Zach Hoddle. He is a county historian and the archivist for Shenandoah County Library System. Bill Wine is here with us. He's a local historian as well as Brad Swank. He's on the CAC charged with part of this chapter for the historical and cultural resources that we're talking about today. And we went to break, guys, and we were talking about perception of history and the value that people place on it. When you were at these information sessions that you did throughout the year last year, inviting all of these citizens to come and give their feedback for what they liked about the county and what they didn't so much like, how did history and historical resources factor into those conversations? Jenna, we got a lot of good feedback from the citizens at these information sessions, especially in the history chapter. Some of the things they love is just like there's a feeling of community in the county. There's a strong German heritage and remnants of family dating back to 1750s in the same church. There's a long line of, of history and a, and a lot of the smaller communities outside of what we think of Shenandoah County and, and the, the larger ones, meaning Woodstock, Newmarket, Strasburg, Edinburgh. And people love, of course, the mountains that are contained within the county and, and the history behind them and how just generally beautiful the Shenandoah County is. They love that, that the life is simple. It's old fashioned and, and generally peaceful. And they really like that not a lot has changed 
in, in the county, unlike some of the urban sprawl that we see from uh, some of the other areas. They don't want the county to be a Northern Virginia. And it's going to be difficult for us as we're writing the chapter. The comprehensive plan is not writing legislation, but how do we write it in a way so that we can influence the decisions that are made by the, the Board of Supervisors? And how do we word it so that the interests of the citizens are, are reflected in, in the comprehensive plan? That's a unique position to be in where you have to craft this comprehensive plan as a guideline that you hope they will use as a go-by when any kind of legislation needs to happen because you can't really, within this plan itself, write any laws, rules, or ordinances necessarily. Correct. That's right. And we're planning that when we are at a point where we're pretty comfortable with the comprehensive plan, we'll be working at, to update our zoning ordinance and our subdivision ordinance to reflect the comprehensive plan so it could all be done around the same time. Because the last time we've had a comprehensive zoning update is actually never. It's, uh, it's always been the same zoning ordinance since 1978. Updating those types of things, it's a horizontal consistency throughout how we're talking about our vision and how we're going to enforce that vision. Brad brought up an interesting point when he was talking about the feedback and the, the mountains and a lot of the landscape of Shenandoah County, which isn't typically something you think of from a history perspective, but it absolutely is part of the history of the county. Do you find that a lot when you're doing things that are his history related for the library or for the county as a whole? The landscape is definitely part of the history of the community because it defines where communities are, it defines where structures go, I mean, it defines how we use things, what our industry and what our farming is like. But people don't necessarily think of that. They think of a historic house. They never think of the connections to things a lot of times. But the historic landscape is definitely part of it. And how do we preserve not only a specific historic structure, but how do we preserve the area that's around it because that's just as important if you're trying to preserve a farmhouse and you preserve the house but it's now surrounded by a subdivision there's a lot that's lost there so it's how do we balance preservation of not only the structure but also the land the way this land's used is it clear cut versus timber historically all of those things have to go into an understanding of historic preservation Bill, I would imagine that's a big piece of what you do is helping these families and these people that want to preserve maybe the structure, but having them have that greater understanding of what's surrounding it as well so that it can stay in its own form. Absolutely. As Zach said, the surrounding landscape was just as important as the farmhouse and the barn and the dependencies around that place because it was all working together to allow these people to, to thrive. Historically speaking, for instance, if you took away the land, then you took away a major historic component of that property because not only did you lose the view shed, you lose the the whole reason the place was there to begin with. Yeah, the whole context is suddenly not there anymore. Yes. Tyler, in some of these other chapters, we've talked a lot about how some of them are looking at what's currently in the plan and maybe tweaking it a little, not necessarily rewriting it or gutting it and starting from scratch. How will the plan moving forward work for this particular chapter with the historical and cultural resources? That's a good question. So I think it'll be similar to many other chapters where the side where we where we could call it the report, where the structure of the data, the way the story has been told, the narrative of the county has been told, will likely be similar. But there may be more attention put to, okay, so now we know this, so what are we going to do about it? And you know, what actions can we take to address the historical resources of the county, be it the historical scenic resources or the structures themselves or programs? So something we talked a lot about actually before this call was the lack of public knowledge about historic resources in the county and how Bill had mentioned that sometimes when someone just knows that their house is unique, could make them be more interested in restoring the house or paying more care to the structure they have once they know how important it actually is. So I think a lot of attention is going to be placed on, okay, we know this is important, so how are we going to make sure that resource is kept or that it's acknowledged in the community? There's a, a wide array of aspects that we talked about from more public knowledge in our schools, as well as the public sphere itself, ways that we can make sure that when someone is about to demolish or gut 
a historic structure, that they would know that it is a historic structure and maybe some kind of a review process with that, some sort of ways that you could uh, encourage people to do those types of improvements. I'll turn it over to Bill because Bill's had the most experience with working with people on restoring their property. And you've mentioned a couple of ways, like how you've seen why people are encouraged to do that. How do you go to the point of you've got a dilapidated home, you're going to now take the work to invest in it and restore it to the way it used to be. How do you get from point A to point B? Because that's quite a task. It's never as simple as say a modern day building where you're just going to go in and update the electrical. It's never that easy. And a lot of people specifically look for these types of homes. This is the kind of home that they want and they want to take on a project like that. I'm wondering how often do they know what they're really getting themselves into? Usually they'll find that out if they have a home inspection. And then sometimes they'll be frightened by the home inspection or they'll look at it as a minor obstacle. I work with homeowners, property owners all the time on those particular issues to where they want to do some of the work for themselves, but there's some things they're uncomfortable with tackling. That's where I come in sometimes or a lot of times and take care of the structural aspect things that it's just out of their league and get that taken care of for them. So then they're off on a good footing, so to speak, to begin the, the remainder of the restoration or preservation process. And every building, every place is different. Everything has its own challenges. But for the most part, I've been finding a lot of people are very enthusiastic when they buy these places and they're up for a challenge. And, and many of them have done very well. I've gone back to follow up to see how they've done and they've done extraordinarily well. And I just warn them that, hey, if people find out you're doing this kind of work, you're probably going to end up with lots of business. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, you bring up a good point because you talk about how sometimes people buy properties and they see what the visual is from the street or from the driveway. And they think, oh, I'm just going to tear this down because I'm going to build something new. And then somewhere along the line, they find out that it is some really great piece of Shenandoah County history it would be great on the front end for people to know that going in so that they don't already maybe tear something down and then realize what it was and now it's gone. What are you going to do? So I think that's some of the things too that I would guess the comprehensive plan might try to address when it comes to public knowledge. I think that you know a lot of the history right now in the county is focused on external events and how those external events have influenced the history of the county but not exactly internal events or internal individuals who are integral to like why certain things are named. Why is Roots Hill named Roots Hill? There, there may not be any knowledge about that. So I'll defer to Zach. Just to build on that, the sense of history in our community has to be about the people and the places in our community. It only makes sense. It's local history at its finest. And if we understand it better through that lens, then we understand better how it impacts us directly. That's the kind of history people are really interested in. They're interested in the history of their house or the history of their community or the history of their landscape. And they want to understand better how that was developed and the way it is. Instead, a lot of times people focus on maybe how it, it ties into the Civil War or it ties into some other national trend or conflict or something. But we have to understand history starts locally and builds out from there. That's the thing that we really need to look at is how the local history can be built upon and how it really can be used to, to define where we're at. And right, you're right, and I, because a lot of times we hear a name and we think we don't know where that name came from. And then we realize, oh, wait, I went to school with somebody whose grandfather was that guy. And then suddenly it's important to me and I'm interested in it. So having that individual connection with people to their community, not necessarily a general that was here however many years ago during the Civil War, is really important for future interest in history. I'm in a lucky place where I get to hear those stories all the time, and I'll tell you that they're very rewarding to understand or to see when people make connections with their local community. And it's not only focusing locally, but it's focusing on history that can sometimes be more relevant. It's not only what happened here 250 years ago, it's what happened here 50 years ago or 25 years ago. That's all part of our collective historic narrative, and it's all important to who we are. Tyler, what's the next step? Where are you guys at in the process, and what do you do next? We actually just announced our first four community collaboration sessions where we're going to be working with existing events throughout the county. So we'll be at Battle of the Bands in Mount Jackson on May 7th, and then we'll be in Strasburg's Mayfest, May 14th, 
And then on the 21st of May, we're going to be in Newmarket for their Jammin' Food Fests. And then on the 25th of June, we'll be in Woodstock at their Art Fest. We'll have a couple of others that we'll announce later on, but those will be the first four. So we'll have a 10 by 20 foot wide area with two tables for input, with different activities for people to give their input. And that's where we're going to ask them these questions as it relates to the history chapter and every other chapter we've gone over over the past few months and start asking, okay, this is what you like or what you want to see improved. What's that going to look like? Where is that actually going to occur? How are we going to put this in place so that when we come to you all next year with a draft of the plan, we're actually quoting the words of the public and how we're going to make this thing happen. And we're going to have a mock meeting on the 30th of March as well. So I invite Bill and Zach in case anybody wants to come as well. And we'll do another mock meeting in April as we work out the kinks on on this. To give a little bit of a visual, last fall, the community information sessions kind of ankle deep into the plan and, and its process. And this next step that we're going, I'd say we're getting knee deep into it. By the end, we'll be fully submerged. So the next step, I think, for Seth and I, as this the whole process develops, is to, at these next sessions, to, to ask those specific questions like Tyler alluded to and ask, what about the history of the county? What do you think are the important events that should be included? And what recent events that have happened since the last plan do you think should be included into this plan? And how can we tie this in to make sure that those events are preserved and not lost for various reasons like we've talked about today? And that's an important point because we've spent a lot of time talking about the history in terms of many years ago. But you guys have to look at the history right now and in the last 10 or 20 years, because you're right, you have to make sure this plan in 2045 addresses maybe something happened in 2018 and something was demolished or a road was put somewhere or something happened that people suddenly thought, wait, we should have done a better job of. So those are things that you have to look at in recent history to make sure that you're not repeating them in future history. I think that's a great theme with what Zach is doing right now, too, with the 250th, where like your old motto is the emblem of that. Yeah, honoring the past, inspiring the future. That's our goal there. And Tyler, we talked about this, I think, in the last show. I think these community collaboration meetups are fantastic, that you're now coming out to the people. I think that's going to make it a whole lot easier when you're going to these events where people are going to be anyway. I think you're probably going to find, at least in my opinion, from a marketing perspective, people are a lot more open and a lot more willing to share their opinions and their thoughts and that sort of thing when they're at something like those events, because that's the nature of why they're there to enjoy their community and support their community. So I think you're going to see a whole lot more input than possibly what you've seen in the past. We certainly hope so. I think you're absolutely right. I think a lot of people are very go with the flow. If it it works for their schedule, they're going to do it. But they're not going to be proactive and say, I'm worried that 20 years from now, the county might want to put a target beside me, or that they're not going to put a historical trail here through this battlefield land. Most people aren't going to do that. They're going to be concerned when the proposal comes to them and they start digging out the ground to to build or construct whatever's going on. So we're hoping that if we can go to where people are, we can be a little bit more proactive uh, and address some of these issues and the the historical resources in the county so that we can at least preserve some of them. I I think we talked about this last month too, when I went on my little mini rant about putting a sheets up next to your house. This is the opportunity for residents and citizens of Shenandoah County to get in even before the ground level. This is the opportunity for them to say, this is what I want to happen in my neighborhood, in my county, before it gets to the point where suddenly there's a public hearing because sheets may be coming up on your corner. Corner. And by then, sometimes it's a little too late, no matter how you feel about it. So this is where you really get to make that decision now. So you don't have to fight and argue about it later that I think is missed among a lot of people when comprehensive plan talk rolls around. Absolutely. Just to give you an example of where we stand now, we, we call out all our natural resources, but let's say you bought a farm and it has a cemetery on it. And you decided, I'm gonna put in a pool here because it's the best place. I'm gonna get a lot of sunlight. You can go ahead and do that. There's nothing in the county that can stop you from digging up the cemetery and putting in the pool. If it's not on our maps, or if it's a historical building that was there since the Revolutionary War or the Native American structures, there's nothing we can do. So that's where we're hoping that this plan can 
give that guidance to say these resources are important and we do need to at least review. The people on the radio can't see my face right now, but it is utter shock. That's going to be the, the difficulty in, in writing the, the comprehensive plan across all the chapters is how do we influence without enforcing because of the lack of enforcement or how do we influence more enforcement of the, the preservation of the historic aspects of the county or the enforcement of the plan for transportation or enforcement of any given chapter. But like I said, it, it's, it is a document that will be in black and white. So if somebody says, show me in writing, you can go back to the comprehensive plan. The Board of Supervisors should be continually doing it. And I, of course, I trust that they are whenever they're making any major decisions in any given um, subject. And to add to that, I think that we all need to be consensus builders to create a shared vision instead of having this us against them and, and try to browbeat someone into submission. A friend of mine, he's since passed a few years back, he developed a historic district in Loudoun County known as the Goose Creek Historical District. It's south of Percival and all these farms along this Goose Creek area were preserved and he pulled this off back in the 1960s and he went to visit and he befriended all these farmers that that owned all this property and there was beautiful landscape and they they all came together and and they all had one common vision and that was to preserve what they held dear they did not want to see it destroyed by development even though at that time the threat of development was almost non-existent, but still he went to them without this government or any heavy handedness from any government entity. And they all came together and they agreed to establish this historic district. And, and I'd say hats off to him. If we're going to continue that kind of work, we need to be consensus builders and work with people. You're not going to get everyone to agree, but I think if you get the majority to to catch the vision, you'll have lots of success. And that's part of making sure that everybody makes their own effort and their own attempt to have their voice be heard. Because you can't sit back in the wings and never offer up an opinion or suggest anything and then complain. It's my, my argument for voting. You don't get to complain about who got elected to office if you didn't go to the polls that day. Exactly. So it, it really is. And I think the other part of this is gonna be education. Tyler, you talked about the lack of public knowledge for a lot of things. A lot of it is gonna to have to fall back on you and the citizens as a whole to know and understand what this stuff is and why it's important so that they can then educate their neighbor and their children and their favorite business owner when they pop into their shop to chat for a little bit while they're shopping. A lot of it, it all falls back on all of us, not just on you guys when you're putting together this plan. For sure. Yeah. We talked a lot about the different types of partnerships that we'd like to hopefully see moving forward with the plan and the county. And you know, it, it's going to take the entire community to fully address our historic resources and make sure that the next generation can enjoy them. So where can people go get more information about this entire process? They can go to shendoacountyva.us forward slash future. And at that page, you can find all the information about our upcoming meetings, our Facebook page, our survey, and everything that's coming up. You can also find us on Facebook. If you search Shenandoah 2045, it should bring up our page. And you can also always give us a call at 540-459-6185. And we'll be more than happy to take any of those ideas that people have for the future so we can make sure that their voice is heard and we can have that consensus building that Bill's talking about. And if I may, encourage people to take the survey. It doesn't take much time, but it can be a vital step into to getting into and understanding the comprehensive plan. And Brad, a lot of the other CAC members that have joined Tyler and I for these conversations have basically pleaded with people that if you know me or you see me out somewhere and you have an opinion or you want me to know something, all of you are open to emails, phone calls, you know, running into you at the local grocery store to say, hey, I heard you on the radio talking talking about historical resources. I didn't know what that was. Can you explain it to me? All of you guys are all in to be that voice and be that education for somebody if they just don't know where to start. 
Right. And that being said, I'll provide my personal email address that anybody has any information or feedback that they would like to give me or, or just a general opinion. I will take that and take it into consideration because that is our job as the, the Citizens Advisory Committee. It's right in the name. We're citizens and we're representing the citizens, hopefully representing the citizens as a whole. And I will take that feedback. In any case, my, my email is B as in Bradley. D is in David Swank, S W A N K, at Verizon.net. More than welcome to send me an email and give me any feedback that you, you would like. And I will put the link to that in the show notes page. So if somebody is listening and they're not anywhere, they can scribble it down. That link will be in the show notes page. Thank you guys for taking some time to have this really interesting conversation. It is solidifying even more this idea that I've had for quite some time now to do a special radio show every month on history as a whole. Uh, a couple of months ago, I had on Kristen from Bell Grove, and it occurred to me that every time Bell Grove has been on the show, we have talked about an event that they have going on, and that I live literally a stone's throw from Bell Grove and have no idea what the history of that place actually is. So Zach's better be ready because I'm going to be calling Zach, Bill, I'm going to be calling <laughs> you and saying, hey, I want to do a history show. Meet me up on the radio and let's talk a little bit of history about everything in the Shenandoah Valley. Are you Absolutely. in? Absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely. Thank you guys for your time today. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will be back tomorrow. I will have a brand new episode of The Valley today ready to go for you. I'm actually staying in Shenandoah County of sorts. Carrie Hahn and I are going to meet up and head over to a pop-up shop that's happening next to the Woodstock Brew House. So we're going to find out what's going on at that pop-up shop tomorrow on the show. Meet me back here for that just a few minutes after noon.